Pittsburgh has an unconventional transit network, and not without reason. The city's hills create unique transportation challenges, and its rivers often make dense neighborhoods challenging to reach. But the region has incredible potential. While everyone's favorite steel city may not be the great industrial powerhouse it once was, its hubs at downtown and Oakland remain busy, and transit mode share is greater than similar sized cities. Pittsburgh is as filled with walkable neighborhoods as it is with universities and medical centers, yet even as investments in bike infrastructure have been made, transit has been slow to catch up. PRT's light rail system is really an adopted collection of streetcar lines, and portions have been removed from service after revealing themselves to be useless. These include an awkward mixed traffic line through Allentown, which is clearly far slower than the Mount Washington Tunnel, and a spur to Penn Station, which was actually part of an old rail route and built for cheap alongside the downtown light rail tunnel. This tunnel was built all new in the 80s, but bizarrely, the newest parts of the system are among the slowest. Much like the inner urbans they replaced, trains breeze through tiny communities and slip between houses. Many stops are made by request, where only the front door opens, and the network as a whole really feels like an upgrade of the bus system rather than a spine that other routes feed into. The real spines of Pittsburgh Transit are the busways. Built along old rail rights-of-way, these bus-only highways run to the west, east, and south of the city, not only connecting the communities they run through, but also speeding up trips for further out bus riders. The MLK East busway is the busiest, carrying more people than the whole light rail system and serving bus routes which scatter all across the region. Buses are dumped onto congested downtown streets, where the presence of dedicated transit lanes is inconsistent. In considering where Pittsburgh's transit needs to improve, let's turn first to its busiest corridor. While neither the light rail nor the busways directly serve Oakland, bus lanes are being implemented between Oakland and downtown to create a mini BRT network. In the long term, this corridor is going to need more capacity. A logical replacement for the branch-heavy BRT system could be a German stadtbahn style light rail network. A cut-and-cover tunnel could run from downtown past the arena through uptown to Oakland. Swinging by Carnegie Mellon, trains could emerge at the Shadyside Hospital, replacing the entirety of the East Busway from the Neville Street ramp to Swissvale. The line would be extended along the planned path of the busway extension to Braddock. Routes currently using the busway could be redesigned to instead feed into light rail stations. Let's add a couple branches. One could depart the trunk line after Carnegie Mellon, navigating on a mixture of dedicated right-of-way and mixed traffic on the surface through to Squirrel Hill and south to the waterfront and homestead. The streets are narrow, but planners could take notes from clever European tramways. A second branch would tunnel from East Liberty, then surface to run down Highland Avenue, serving the zoo and Morningside, with trains every seven to eight minutes on the branches and every six on the grade-separated trunk to Braddock. The core between downtown and Oakland would see trains every three minutes or better. Unlike the current system, these lines could use low-floor trains to minimize construction impacts on streets and the East Busway. While on the topic of branching light rail, a branch could be added to the current system from South Bank, a rare point where rail and bus intentionally connect. This line would run up a path through Brookline Memorial Park, continuing along wide Brookline Boulevard to serve the neighborhood of the same name. A final light rail branch, or rather, a realignment of the blue line, would take it down Route 51 to Century 3 Mall, a massive site that could certainly support a lot of transit-oriented development in the future. With the outer segment of the East Busway gone, I would add a new ramp near Polish Hill so certain express routes could continue to use what remains. Additionally, I would propose converting parts of 376 to HOV lanes and adding median bus stations to provide an alternative for express service into downtown and an improved connection to Monroeville. The same should be done on the western segment of 376, which is actually proposed in the next transit plan and would also improve access to the airport. Similar improvements could also be made to create a new north busway, with freeway stations serving destinations like the Allegheny General Hospital. This is how the overall busway network could look with these changes in place. It's not just the many dense neighborhoods of Pittsburgh that need better transit service. Scattered throughout the region are old towns with thriving walkable centers, or at least they were once thriving and walkable.
Many of these small town centers have seen better days, but frequent reliable rail service could be a great way to revitalize them. This would provide an economic boost through the connection to central Pittsburgh, as well as an incentive for development. Fortunately, most of the region's historic downtowns are located right along rail lines. They could be tied together with an interurban S-Bahn style service using small trains, similar to systems seen in Germany. Wow, we're really taking a lot of inspiration from Germany today, huh? Seven services could be introduced, consisting of Line S1 Allegheny, serving towns to the northeast along the river, S2 Washington, paralleling the West Busway and extending deeper south, S3 Monongahela, winding through hills before entering the Mon Valley, S4 Bridgewater, connecting towns up the Ohio River, S5 Greensburg, on the route of the failed Parkway Limited, S6 Fall Run, through tiny villages to the delightfully named town of Zelianopol, and S7 Glassport, through the inner segment of the Monongahela. Most of the infrastructure already exists to make this a reality, even some station buildings, but a couple of river crossings would be needed as well as a new alignment into the Mon Valley. Beyond this, tunnels could be added to serve the Allegheny Commons and the dense neighborhoods of Lawrenceville and Bloomfield. These areas, located in the core of the network, would see trains passing through every few minutes. With beautiful Penn Station finally receiving more than the abysmal rail service Amtrak provides, it might be worth reactivating the old abandoned light rail spur. However, I'd recommend creating a new isolated line, most likely an automated metro. This shuttle would run from the station to Steel Plaza, where an extra pair of tracks facilitate a one-directional cross-platform transfer. It could dip under Duquesne University and cross the river, serving stops in Southside Flats. Given that demand would not be very high, I'm imagining a line with similar capacity to French VAL systems. Our network is nearly complete. There are still missed connections, like where this S-Bahn line passes Coriopolis on the wrong side of the river, or the absence of service to this major office park. As it turns out, a lot of these missing last mile connections are due to challenging terrain, from large hills to wide rivers. Fortunately, there's a cheap solution to this. You should always be cautious of anybody trying to sell you a gondola. And I swear it's Springfield's only choice. But Pittsburgh is full of great opportunities to use them. From linking Bellevue, Allentown, and Carrick with light rail, to providing more convenient connections between transit and jobs in Oakland and Allegheny, aerial gondolas could be an inexpensive option for dealing with difficult geography throughout the Pittsburgh region. Here are just a few that I think could be valuable. And with that, Pittsburgh Transit has undergone a radical transformation. Light rail is the backbone of the urban network, with express buses and regional rail reaching far out into the suburbs and surrounding cities. These various networks are heavily interconnected, and a system of feeder gondolas provide access to hard-to-reach destinations. These are some of the solutions we at the House of Transit have come up with, but it remains to be seen what PRT will do as they proceed through the next transit plan. Let us know what you would like to see in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next one.